Well, from the euphoria of Banki and Addis Suez Union, we move on to the spotlight. And in this edition, we have acclaimed writer, director and producer Jude Idada tell us his story. Do enjoy. The Nigerian creative industry continues to attain greater heights with the movies and theatres becoming more vibrant and viable. The story of what makes the industry ticks goes beyond the front-end faces and glamour. Some of the biggest works are done from the back end, and one of the more prominent names is theatre and screenwriter, producer and director Jude Idada. An astute storyteller, Jude's exposure came at a relatively young age. Well, my writing, the odyssey of my writing, I think is as old as my birth. I, I have my conscious thoughts is being three-year-old and wanting to read the newspaper. Always been fascinated by stories. My father was a great storyteller. So I think at his feet, I learned the art itself of telling stories. I've been given 30 days to leave the country. So I'll be deported. I can't go back. We will help each other. Oh, wow. At age nine, he wrote his first story, but surprisingly, he was still egged on studying sciences in the hope that he might someday become a medical doctor. The love for the arts in him, however, grew stronger over time, and he found his way back in writing and performing arts. With almost 30 on-screen titles to his name, including the mystic movie Tattoo and the critically acclaimed The Tenet, Idada finds his stories in the most unconventional way. I think my creative um, process starts, it starts pinpointed and then it ripples out, you know. So I start by, I, I'm, I'm a great observer and I'm, I'm a good listener. So what I do is that I, I, I observe life. And when I observed life, I turned to do the backstory. I turned to say, oh, I heard this woman say this thing. What came before that? What will come after that? And then I start creating a story and it just ripples out. Also, I'm an, I'm an avid reader, so I read a lot. And um, like my play, um, Odudua, King of the Edos, that was um, inspired by reading the memoirs of the late Oba, um, of Benin, um, Omonoba Eredioa. And um, when I read that, I did a what-if analysis. I said, what if people believe this because of this? Because the comparative story about the progeny or the identity um, crisis of Odudua, both from the Edo perspective and the Yoruba perspective. And I did a comparative analysis saying, what if the Yorubas believe this because of this? And what if the, if the Benins believe this or the Edos believe this because of this? And that's how I created that piece of work. And I think that's the line that runs through all my work. It's always, I always want to add value. I always want to open minds. I always want to build bridges. It's always, it's always about understanding because I believe that with a lot of understanding, there'll be less crisis in the world. I think I just want to be a light and that's what informs my creativity. As a writer, Jude understands that there are a couple of other creative layers, including directors and actors between his works and the final production. The fear of having their works fall in the hands of bad directors or actors has created dreadful nightmares for many writers, but not Jude who is always optimistic about outcomes. Well, I think naturally as a human being you always want purity in your work you always want to hold control but then you also have to understand that your work it's work in itself it's different from you once you have birthed it you have to allow it go into the world and fulfill its purpose so i i i, I think i have learned to always distance myself to you know but you always also hope that the people who come along after you are better than you or equal to you creatively speaking so that they don't degenerate the work actually they promote it you know in terms of quality and all of that stuff so yes once in a while i have i have seen people touch my room like oh my god you know what i mean but then sometimes i've seen other people touch my work and i'm like wow i didn't even know it's that great and that's why as a writer you want a great editor because he improves your work as a writer you want a great director because he just you know he umps it up and all of that but i also direct myself and i also produce myself so i, I understand the process and I understand that if I took um, work from someone else and um, as a director, the person is hoping that I make their work better. So I think I've learned to speak that language. So when I 
I hope the director wants to talk to me and say, hey, Jude, what inspires this? What's this? So that they get the best understanding possible. And well, you know, you, you have to give and take. You have to let life unfold as it wants to unfold. Jude Idada's tentacles go beyond the screens. He's written and directed stage plays in the name of the father and the seed of life both in 2008. Well, writing for for stage, you have um, you you are not limited. There's no constraint in terms of dialogue. That's that's the greatest constraint. Dialogue dialogue for stage is rosy and colorful, and it's not it's not supposed to mirror life in itself. So you can see someone has a lofty high. But on on film, dialogue has to be real, has to be contemporary, has to be you know as brief as possible. Because you have 90 minutes, you have um, you have uh, at most two hours and every page of a screen play is one minute on on screen so you are curtailed between that stuff and again for film you have to show not tell for stage you have to tell you have to talk that's why you see on stage they talk a lot because they are telling you the story but because on film you can tell the story with special effects you can tell it with other aids with sound which you don't have on stage so for stage, you have to use your words to tell what people cannot see. Oh, and Jude walks down that street that you walk down. But on, on screen, I just do a flashback and just show that in two seconds. You know what I mean? So that's it. The brevity of, of screen to, um, com in, in um, competition with the verbosity of stage. A named member of the screenwriters for the Toronto International Film Festival adapts this initiative and the artistic director of the Africa Theatre Ensemble in Toronto, both in Canada. Jude is among the top earners within the Nigerian creative industry. Sadly, that isn't much, and it comes without add-ons and royalties. It's very simple now. They say, bro, ah, this is Niger. That's what they say. This is Niger. Man, they give you stories. It's like a tailor. It's like, you know, it's, it's a malaise that's across, um, will I say, occupations, across functions. That malaise of we're not a structured people, right? People just feel that once I've paid you, I have paid you, even though the contract says that you owe me this after that, the fact. If, if either they misrepresent what they've earned after it, and they tell that we've not earned anything at all, or they reduce the amount they've earned, because everybody's just trying to get, as, uh, the, the, everybody's trying to outsmart the next person. You see it in the traffic. You, nobody wants to give anybody space. So it, it filters into every other as, aspect of our lives. So, we all know now that as a writer, once you write, they pay you up front. Just know that's it. Whether you say you have some, you know, people do their contracts and they say, oh, 10% 10, 10 of rev, rev, um, revenues, net revenues, gross revenues, all those things are just words. But we're hoping that, you know, when the lawyers, because we need professionals to come in, that's in other professionals, like, you know, lawyers and all those accountants, once they come in and structure these things, where we have third parties, who when the film earns the web, web revenue, it doesn't go straight to the producer. It goes through these other people who are like umpires, who are like the neutral people who will say, okay, the monies have come in, this is what, this is what, this is what, this is what, Pro producer, this is your share, writer. Until that happens, then I think um, we just have to do it, you know, wild, wild west. Late in 2016, Jude Idada courted controversy after he secured a court injunction to stop the screening of Okafo's Law, produced and directed by frontline Nollywood actress Omoni Oboli. Jude has cited copyright infringement and had brought Oboli to tears on our premiere date. I was showing you the movie today. I mean, the movie's been to Toronto International Film Festival. Although the case is now in court and Idada couldn't comment about it, he claims his team bears no grudge against Oboli. I come from a place of peace. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a rancorous person. I do not have any ill will towards anybody. It's something that happened, a misunderstanding that happened that can always be I, I, ironed out. I don't think there's any reason to have malice to create any cold war. So I'm forever open to... I don't want to say reconciliation because there hasn't, to me, for my own part, there hasn't really been any disconnect. I'm just looking at a work of art that stands on its own. So with that being said, whatever the future holds, I'm very open to embracing it.